This is an example demonstrating the existential instantiation rule. We call it drug test. The story is this. If there is any woman who uses any medication, then that woman may participate in our drug test. There is a woman who uses some medication, thus someone may participate in our drug test. Let's begin by defining W of X to be X is a woman. U of X and Y means person X uses medication Y. And P of X means X may participate in our drug test. From the story and these definitions, we may represent two premises as for all X, for all Y, W of X and U of X, Y imply P of X. That is, if there is any woman who uses any medication, then that woman may participate in our drug test. Second premise is there exists a P, there exists a Q, such that W of P and U of PQ. That is, there is a woman who uses some medication. The conclusion we seek is there exists a Z such that P of Z. That is, someone may participate in our drug test. Once again, symbolically, the premises are for all X, for all Y, W of X and U of X and Y imply P of X and there exists a P, there exists a Q such that W of P and U of P and Q. The conclusion is there exists a Z such that P of Z. So how would we construct a proof of this? Let's begin by looking at the conclusion. The conclusion says there exists a Z such that P of Z. If we look at the first premise, we see that predicate P is the consequence of an implication. The antecedent of that implication is the conjunction of predicates W and U. The second premise, in fact, involves W and U. The second premise is quantified by two existentials, while the first premise is quantified by two universals. The conclusion requires an existential. It appears that a simple use of modus ponens will suffice for the proof after the instantiations, but we must be careful to do the existential quantifications prior to the universal instantiations. So we will instantiate the second premise twice and then using the names assigned to those instantiations, we will instantiate the first premise also twice. That's the key to our proof. If you would like to complete this proof on your own, please pause this video now. On line one, we place our second premise. There exists a P, there exists a Q, such that W of P and U of P and Q. On line two, we existentially instantiate line one with P being replaced by A star. This results in there exists a Q such that W of A star and U of A star and Q. On line three, we existentially instantiate line two with Q being replaced by B star. This results in W of A star and U of A star and B star. Now let's introduce the first premise onto line four. We have for all X, for all Y, W of X and U of X and Y imply P of X. On line five, we existentially instantiate line four with X being replaced by A star. This results in for all y, w of a star and u of a star and y imply p of a star. On line 6, we existentially instantiate line 5 with y being replaced by b star. This results in w of a star and u of a star and b star imply p of a star. Now from lines 4 and 6, we are allowed to use modus ponens to obtain P of A star. 
Since a star arose from an existential instantiation, we are allowed now to do an existential generalization from line 7 to conclude there exists a z such that p of z. That is on line 8 and that concludes the proof.